Hello everybody, this is Linda Israel and I want to share with you how I use sewing in a piece of art. I'm using a piece of art that I made in an anirandac spray video earlier on. You can check that out to see how I made that. And I'm using a gold leafing pen to go around the edge. Next I use a frame that I cut from my Cricut on some cardboard and I'm painting it with some gesso and then I'll go over it with some blue and green acrylic craft paint. I like to use my craft mat so I can just clean it right up and it doesn't mess up my whole work surface. And I pick up my craft paint whenever it's on sale or if I know that I'm running low on a few colors. I decided that after I put on the blue and the green that I need a little bit more color so I ended up using my denim colored Anirondack spray and spraying it over the top and blending that in a little bit and then I used my heat gun to dry it. I could have set it aside but for speeding up of time I wanted it dry quicker so I could have it ready for this project without having to wait a long time. After I got it dry, I decided that I wanted to put some glitter on it, so I covered it with some glossy accents and then covered it with glitter. If you don't know me already, I like to cover things with glitter. Most of my projects have just a little bit of glitter in it somewhere, and I've been accused of having glitter on my face quite frequently. The piece of paper with the text on it is a page from an old Reader's Digest. I tore the pages out when I was altering it and I save them so don't throw away your scrap papers. And then the paint that I put on it was what was on my foam brush. And even though I'm going to sew down the heart in another piece of paper I still like to glue it down just a little bit so that when I go to sew it it won't shift. I found that if I don't glue things down just a little bit that they will shift on me and then I'm not happy with the results. The size that I'm working on is 6 by 6 I took some mat board that I purchased at a hobby store for half price to back to their framing department and asked them to cut it into 12 inch pieces so then I could bring it back to my large paper cutter and cut it down to whatever size I wanted. I'm using just a regular sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. I think I have maybe a size 12 or 14 needle and regular white thread and I'm just again doing a zigzag stitch around my image nothing really fancy just something very simple I'm not locking the stitches since it's not going to be handled a lot I'm just snipping it free when I'm done This was a piece that I cut from my Sizzix dye machine. It's for a flower. It's part of an embellishment there and I'm painting it green. I did all of this work and I did not use it on this project because I couldn't decide where I wanted it or how it would fit. At one point you'll see me lay it on there and you'll see another hand pop into the frame husband comes up behind me and says that just looks weird <laughs> which seems to be my phrase right now is that's just weird the stamps that I'm using are from invoke art stamps I got them at a rubber stamp convention in grapevine Texas each word is a separate stamp and I have it on an acrylic block I love their stamps. I just looked on their website and you can't purchase this set anymore. They now have the words embedded in other things like on a ticket. Like
a raffle ticket or something like that. I like to use my scrap paper and for some reason I'm into tearing so it seems to fit me at the moment. I didn't mention this but the blue that I painted the follow your heart was a gel pen and it might be shiny it raises up just a little bit I think they're called jelly roll pens I really like them they're fun you can pick them up in the hobby department or in the scrapbooking department I'm using the Aline's craft glue to glue my project down couldn't quite decide where to put everything. I I move things around when I work. It seems that, you know, I may not have a set design in mind. I'll pick things up and put them down and move them around and sometimes I'll get things out and think I'll use all of those items and I won't use them all and sometimes I have to stop in the middle of what I'm doing and get up and go get something else. So it's always nice to have all your supplies within reach so you don't have to dig around too much and it doesn't stop your flow, your train of thought. One project I was doing I had to holler at my husband and said, hey would you grab something for me? And He's like, well you have a million stamps, I don't know which one to get so I had to describe it for him. <laughs> See that's where I'm putting in that little glitter piece and I'm trying to decide if I want to use it or not. And you'll see Henry's hand in just a moment. There it comes. Right there. <laughs> That's what I said. Nope. I'm using Prima flowers. They came in a little cute paint bucket. I thought they were a lot of fun. Uh, kind of a blue and purple. And they have this weathered look to them. I didn't do any distressing to them at all. I have a little paint. Uh, not paint. I have a sanding board that I'm using. It's kind of like a credit card that's a emery board in a sense. It's really handy. I'm glad I have those from TLC. I'm just layering up the flowers with my craft glue. I'm still trying to use that stupid glitter thing. <laughs> the butterfly is what I made from my uh, polymer clay and I have another video on how to make those and I like to glue those down with both my craft glue and the hot glue decided to embellish just a little bit with some more glitter it's hard to get all the highlights on video because you can't really get all the good angles in one shot. You almost want to have like four video cameras pointed at your work so you can see everything. But that's it. That, I'm done. I'm putting down the butterfly and I'm done with it. I hope you like it. It was something fun. Hopefully it inspires you. Please comment, subscribe, and have a blessed day. Bye.